Okay, Tor puts in $50. Thank you, Tor. He says, I'm from, hi, I'm from Cuba. Thanks for speaking about Cuba. My family is still there. I'm sorry to hear that. What do you think about the relationship between collectivism versus sense of connection with others or collectivism versus compassion? Maybe something about the relationship between those, whoops, those what? Those, and then it ended. Sorry, I didn't get the rest of the question. All right, but let me, let me maybe that was it. Maybe it, among those, maybe you intended there to be a, a period there. Um, I think collectivism destroys sense of connection. And collectivism destroys one's ability to be compassionate. Collectivism is the idea that you should live for the group. That the group is your stand, should be your standard of value. That what's good for, quote, good for the group is what is important, is what is valuable, is, is what is meaningful. That your life only means something in the context of the group. Now, I think that breeds resentment towards others. Because you're telling me that my happiness is not important. These other people's happiness is important. Why? You're telling me that I should make decisions, and all decisions should be made, not based on what's good for me, but what's based good for the group. Why? You're basically telling me that my relationship with other people is zero-sum. That anything that they gain, sh anything that I gain is at their expense. And therefore, I should not gain. I should give to them. That's what collectivism demands. Well, I resent them then because I don't have stuff. Collectivism breeds resentment. It makes you suspicious of other people. Dislike other people. Because they're getting... They are the standard by which decisions are being made, not you. You're being sacrificed to them. That's the nature of collectivism. And therefore, you feel no compassion towards them. You dislike them. It is indeed the egoist who values other people, who's interested in connecting with other people, not as a sacrifice, not just for the sake of whatever, for the sake of the group, but because he sees others as real values, as traders with him. Not all others, but many. So the egoist looks at other people and sees producers. The egoist looks at other people and sees traders. The collectivist looks at other people and sees moochers. Because they are mooching off of him. This is what the welfare state does. He sees people living off of him. People he's expected to sacrifice towards, and he resents them. The egoist loves them because they're creating values that he benefits from. And the same with compassion. The egoist sees somebody suffering and has, it, it, this is, the other is a productive, assuming, is a productive trader, is a value to him, therefore he cares. But if the other is a moocher, a looter, Somebody that I'm expected to sacrifice towards, I don't care if he suffers. He deserves it, right? That's the attitude. So collectivists and collectivist societies are always less benevolent, less compassionate, less friendly, less inviting than individualist societies. This is why America has always been so welcoming and so benevolent and so friendly and so nice because it's been so individualistic and as that individualism is sucked out of american society so will the goodwill so will the pleasantness ness ness whatever so to uh, i hope that answers your question and i hope your family stays safe in cuba and that they manage to escape it turns out that the biden administration is now saying that they will turn back Cubans who leave Cuba. I can't think of anything more ugh, evil than that. That is just so evil. People escaping tyranny, and you would send them back, right? FDR sent Jews back to World War II, and, uh, you know, we have a long history of doing this, but it's still, every time I see it, I still find it so disgusting and so horrific. What we need today what I call the new intellectual would be 
any man or woman who is willing to think. Meaning, any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brutes. All right, before we go on, reminder, please like the show. We, we've got 163 live listeners right now, uh, 30 likes. That should be at least 100. I figure at least 100 of you actually like the show. Maybe there are like 60 of the Matthews out there who hate it. But, but at least the people who are liking it, you know, I want to see, see a thumbs up. There you go. Start liking it. I want to see that go to 100. All it takes is a click of a, a, click of a, a thing, whether you're looking at this. Uh, and, and, you know, the likes matter. It, it's not an issue of my ego. It's an issue of the algorithm. The more you like something, the more the algorithm likes it. So, you know, and if you don't like the show, give it a thumbs down. Let's see your actual views being reflected in the likes. But uh, if you like it, don't just sit there, help get the show promoted. Of course, you should also share, and uh, you can support the show at yourownbookshow.com slash support or on Patreon or Subscribestar or Locals uh, and, uh, and show your support for, all, for, for, for the work, for the value hopefully you're receiving from this. And, uh, and of course, don't forget, if you're not a subscriber, even if you... Even if you just come here to troll, or even if you're here like Matthew to defend Marx, uh, then uh, you should subscribe, because that way you'll know when to show up. You'll know what shows are on, when they're on. You'll get notified. Right? So, um, yes, like, share, subscribe, support. Like, share, subscribe, support. There you go. Easy. Do one or all of those, please. <laughs> 